You're watching WKYT News at Noon. Good afternoon from WKYT. It's a busy day here on this Friday in the news. A fire has claimed a person's life and critically injured two other people. The fire started at the Country Hills Apartments on Schinkel Lane around 1 o'clock this morning. We don't know yet who the victims are, but people who live in the building tell us a mother and two children live in that apartment. WKYT's Mark Barber is live in Frankfurt now with our top story at 1230. Mark. Good afternoon, Barbara. As difficult as it is for investigators to work this fatal fire, they say the timing of it is making everything so much more difficult. They say this family lost everything they had just six days before Thanksgiving. Take a look over my shoulder now. This is the apartment where investigators say they were staying. As you can see, there is not much left. We're hearing from several people this afternoon that a mother lived here with several of her children. Now, the fire in this apartment at the Country Hills Complex started around 1.45 this morning, killing one person. Two of their family members, who were also hurt in the fire, are in critical condition at UK Hospital. The coroner is still trying to contact their other family members, so he has not released the identity of the person who was killed yet. The property manager tells us there are eight apartments in this building and they were all evacuated during the fire. The Red Cross is helping those people find a place to stay. There's no word at this time about how many people were forced out of their homes. State arson investigators and fire marshals are now trying to find answers to the two big questions here. What sparked the flames and where did they start? While the investigation is continuing, one worried woman has driven past this apartment twice in the past few hours. She says one of her family members and their young children live in this building, and she is desperate to figure out if they are okay. Kind of really unexplainable, really, you know. <clears throat> you know, with it being like around the holidays, like I said, you really don't know. You know, really don't know what to think or say. Whenever it's anybody seriously injured or 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 a fatality, like in this case, uh, it's a tragedy. The property manager here says that there were fire alarms in the building, and he says that the building was up to code. At this point, Frankfurt police say they are bringing in code officials to see if that was the case. Live in Frankfurt, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you. And investigators say it could take 10 days to determine the cause of that fire. A woman died in an early morning crash in Montgomery County. The sheriff says a woman in a van pulled out in front of a truck driver on Highway 460. The driver of the van died at the scene. Authorities have not released her name, but say she worked at Mapleton Elementary and was on her way there. No one in the truck was hurt. School officials in southern Kentucky say there is no danger after a threat was made at a high school. Once the threat hit social media, Knox County school officials say the rumors quickly got out of control. WKYT's Phil Pendleton has more on that from Barberville. This all started yesterday when a student was apparently overheard making some comments in the cafeteria during a breakfast, but school officials tell me today that at no time was other students' safety at risk. However, once word of the situation got out on social media, school officials say rumors spread like wildfire. We were even told that some were saying there were concerns of a hit list. But spokesperson Frank Shelton says there was never a hit list and there was no validity to the threat. Like I said, that was never the case. That was not even part of the investigation that actually took place here on Thursday. So we're not quite sure how that um, rumor, if you will, got started, but it was not reflective of actually what occurred at Knox Central. School officials are not saying much about this student, his or her age, or even their grade, only to say they've turned it over to the Barberville City Police Department. In Knox County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Phil, thank you. And school officials say they are sending a letter home with students stating that at no time was their safety a concern for the students there at the school. It's going to be a little while longer until we learn more about an investigation involving the Powell County High School boys basketball team. State police began the investigation at the request of the sheriff's office. It involves allegations of inappropriate behavior. The school district told us today it will not be releasing a statement until they get the police report. And state police say they will not be releasing more information due to the ages of the alleged victims and the alleged perpetrators. 
A third person has been arrested in a four year old murder case. Natasha Martin is charged with murder and robbery in the death of Paul Brewer in Montgomery County back in December 2011. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office picked Martin up last night. Police arrested Cody Hall and Nikki Miller in that case last week. A crime alert today after a man was carjacked at gunpoint. Nicholasville police say two gunmen jumped the victim around 10 o'clock last night at the Kroger gas station in Brandon Crossing. Now, the men were told forced him to drive to the Kentucky River at the Garrett County line, where they kicked him out and stole his car, wallet, and cell phone. Police say the man walked to a friend's house to get a ride back home. No arrests have been made. A man accused of harboring vicious dogs has pleaded guilty. Chris Pope pleaded guilty to 12 counts of violating a city ordinance requiring that dogs be kept in humane conditions over in Boyle County. The Advocate Messenger reports as part of the deal, he relinquished control of 11 dogs and agreed to pay restitution, fines, and court costs, and will have to also now serve 90 days in jail. Police still say that he is facing charges in Lincoln County related to a dog attack that badly injured a woman over the summer. It has been a week now since terrorists rocked Paris with a series of deadly attacks. Parisians paused to pay tribute to the dead while the search for a key suspect was extended. Tina Krauss has the latest from Paris. The manhunt for Salah Abdeslam has now widened to the Netherlands. The Belgian terror suspect slipped away from the attacks in Paris, and French officials admit they have no idea where he is. Investigators used a cell phone found near the Bataclan Theater to track down suspected ringleader Abdelhamid Abaoud. Police reportedly watched him and his cousin enter an apartment in Saint Denis and launched a raid hours later, killing both of them. French prosecutors now say a third suspect also died in Wednesday's shootout. Abaoud was reportedly caught on surveillance video at this subway station in a Paris suburb within an hour after the massacre. He's apparently seen jumping a security barrier to get in. That is incredible. <laughs> It's absolutely incredible. Uh, this woman says, how is it possible he could slip away so quickly after that? Everything is scary now. Police say they found a getaway car abandoned nearby, leading to speculation Abaoud might have actually helped carry out the attacks. Paris resident Quentin Ayoun worries terrorists will hit his city again. I think it is not uh, finished because uh, one action make one action uh, and again and again and again. It has been a week since terrorists hit and many Parisians stopped in the rain to pay tribute to the victims. One person wounded in the attacks has died. 130 people have now lost their lives. Tina Krauss, CBS News, Paris. The hundreds of people were wounded in the attacks and many of them are still hospitalized with serious injuries. With Christmas approaching soon, Lexington firefighters are wanting to make sure that thousands of children get a visit from Santa. The annual Fraternal Order of Firefighters toy drive started this morning. Last year, they gave toys to more than 3,000 children. They're accepting donations of unwrapped toys for kids up to age 12. They say their efforts have helped a lot of families through some hard times. This is a very exciting time of year for most, but for some it's very stressful due to reasons of loss of employment, um, changes in medical conditions, and also just unexpected medical expenses. And the applications to receive toys must be turned in by November 25th. They can be dropped off at toy headquarters at 2245 Frankfurt Court beginning on Monday morning. Well, Barbershop Harmony is all the rage these days, and the Youth in Harmony Festival is helping young singers polish their skills. Also, how to make sure your next doctor's visit is the best it can be. Dr. Joseph Bark is here to help us all become awesome patients. Next on WKYT. Hey, we're looking around town, seeing those clear skies, but I want you to pay, uh, focus your attention back toward the west. Here comes the system barreling our direction for the second half of Saturday. But what does that mean for you and the timing on this? I'll have that coming up next. 